You're listening to the Social Media Addicts Podcast on the phillytech.org netcast network. Thank you to our sponsors, aweber.com, wistia.com, and getflywell.com. Hello, everybody, and welcome to issue issue 11. Uh, episode, <laughs> Number 11. <laughs> episode 11 of the Social Media Addicts Podcast. I'm Seth. That's Jody. Hi, I'm and, Jody. <laughs> and before we get started real fast, we are running a Patreon campaign. If you guys want to donate and help us out um, on a monthly basis, go to patreon.com slash phillytech.org. Or we're also trying to raise $500 on Indiegogo. Go to social, S-O-C-L dot B-Z slash Indiegogo and give what you can because, you know, we have a bunch of shows coming up, some really good ones that are in development. We hope. <laughs> And we and we need your help to make sure we have the infrastructure that we need to produce these shows. So please give whatever you can. Spread the word as well. So, Jody, how are you? I'm well, Seth. I had um I guess last week you know I did the dog show and um, Jewel did super. She took what's called select. She won over three champion, excuse the expression, bitches, and um, she's probably two thirds of the way towards getting her grand championship. Nice, nice. Well, <laughs> mazel tov to her. Oi, thank you. And how about you? I hear you had a birthday. Not yeah, you, my, but... My, my, son, my son's two years old now. Awesome. Amazing. And, and running around like Chris Looney Tune. He's awesome. Great kid. <laughs> so anyhow, let's quickly thank our sponsors, Wistia, Aweber, Flywheel, and Zoho Mail. I'll we'll tell you a little bit more about them during the show. But let's go on and talk about you know, what's been going on in the news lately um, and how social media has affected it. Um, as many of you know, at least in the U.S. and probably all over, all over the world, um, the grand jury and the Michael Michael Brown, Mike Brown, Michael Brown, that's his name, Michael Brown case came back, and they're not indicting the, the police officer, Officer Wilson, in the death of Mike Brown, and and there were riots yesterday, unfortunately. And today, there's a lot of riots. Yes, I mean, right now there's like they closed the bridges in New York City. There's riots in New York City? Yes. It's oh, Jesus. all over. And there's uh, protests in Philadelphia. And the, the, there's peaceful protests in Philadelphia. But, you know, nonetheless, um, some of the protests in Ferguson, Missouri, got out of hand. You know, um, there have been stores that have been burned. Uh, people have been killed. I mean, the whole thing is is way out of hand. And to it's be honest... Social media's played a part. Well, social media's played a, a huge part. And I think that it's unfortunate because... People don't have the facts, and what's happened is, I think we see it over and over again. It's kind of like whisper down the lane. Somebody shares something that they think Talking to be it. true, or they right, and then somebody else retweet, re, you know, retweets it, and somebody else retweets it, and then people start to think that it's accurate. And I think um, part of the reason that this has become such a huge, huge dilemma is that people are relying on the misinformation that they're hearing through social media and thinking that it's fact. Yeah, I think Ruger agrees with you, too. That's Jewel. <laughs> yeah, Jewel agrees with you as well. It's a, it's a shame, and honestly, I don't know who to believe or what to think. I mean, either way, I mean, Mike Brown's dead, and, and Officer Wilson, his life will never be the same. Oh my God! I mean, lose, yeah, lose, regardless, you know. But, but you know what? Here's the thing, Seth. And I understand you say you don't know what to believe. And I think that what we can believe is the information that was supplied to the grand jury. And what I would encourage everyone to do, instead of just jumping on a bandwagon and um, saying, "Oh, you know, this happened or that happened," go and get your hands on the real information. Get the information that the grand jury looked at, and make a determination for yourself. I know. But honestly, even that, I don't fully believe because honestly, I, I, there's there's been a lot of talk in the media. And keep keep in mind that in the media and on social media as well that you know that the prosecutor has not wasn't exactly biased. There's a little bias towards the, in in favor of the officer. <laughs> well, wait, 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 wait. I don't I don't agree with that at all, Seth. I think that the prosecutor's responsibility was to bring the information to the grand jury, and in mm -hmm. fact, they didn't even suggest what the grand jury should do, which means that the grand jury then had full discretion to evaluate all of the information and determine they could have charged him with anything, okay? Mm -hmm. Like, it didn't have to be 
something really onerous. It could have been anything. And after reviewing the information that they had, which included the forensic information, they came back and they said there was not enough information. There was not enough probable cause. Yeah. You know, so so they did not indict. So yeah. I guess I guess you know, you're right. Yeah. And a lot of people are are up in arms, but they don't necessarily look at the facts, and they're not necessarily looking at the best information. You should get to the source of the information. Don't rely on um, tweets and Twitter. I mean, much as we love social media, yeah. the reality is it is not vetted. It's just like Wikipedia is not the encyclopedia. Exactly, so, exactly. I, I agree to the most, for the most part. I mean, I feel like it's, you know, you know, the Justice Department's now investigating it for, you know, possible civil rights violations, and we'll have to see what happens, you know. But you know what? Honestly, Seth, when, when you even say civil rights violations, bottom line is this was an officer who was trying to do his job, okay? Yeah, that's true. Everything, everything that happened beyond that is what we're trying to piece together. Mm -hmm. He was he was on a call because a store had been robbed and the owner of the store had been beaten up. Mm -hmm. He came across these kids walking down the street and what happened after that according to the officer was that they were very aggressive to the officer. Now I don't know about you but in my book I don't care what color anybody is and mm -hmm. if somebody is going to show aggression to an officer who is out to protect, you know, human lives? They're putting their lives on the line every single day. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't care if you're black, if you're white, if you're yellow, if you're red, if you're pink, if you're purple. It doesn't matter what color you are. But if you are aggressively going after a police officer to the extent that the police officer felt he was in fear for his life, then you, you mean you're going to get you shot. You know, well, it's not necessarily you're going to get shot, but th that's not a normal reaction. So anyway, you know, the politics aside, again, I would encourage everyone, to the extent that it's being made available, go ahead and look at the evidence that was presented to the grand jury. Make your own determination. Um, Absolutely. And don't just jump on a, a social bandwagon because it's what the cool kids are doing. Exactly. I agree. Well, let's move on to a lighter subject. WhatsApp. <laughs> WhatsApp. A lot of people, a lot of people um, kind of were upset when Facebook bought WhatsApp. And um, WhatsApp is a messenger app that is very popular all over, all over the world, less so in the United States. Um, and apparently, it's the most secure messaging app, and it's on Android. It's cross browser you know, and Facebook has generally left it alone. So, check it out. I, I do you use it, Jody, at all? No, I haven't yeah. used it. Um, again, it's like you know. I guess my question is, do I need another messaging platform? Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, I've got um, my iPhone iMessage, I've got Facebook chat, I've got, I don't even know what the heck I've got, Yahoo something or other, I don't even know, there's a lot of cons of things. What about you, do you use it? I, I have it, but I, I, I use it a little bit, and I decide, you know, Hangouts is enough for me. I guess the question is, if you're the only one using it, it's not a lot of fun. No. <laughs> Very good point, so let's move, let's move along. Okay. So, uh, did you ever try Aereo out? No, but I hear they're filing for Chapter 11. Which means that they can still restructure. They lost their Supreme Court ruling. Saying, what the area was was it was allowing you would run out a diamond, a diamond-sized antenna on, a, on, a, on an array in you know in, in a major metropolitan area, and that would give you over there transmission. What um what happened was the 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 TV networks were up in arms about this. Saying that they were retransmitting their shows without permission, yada yada yada, and so pretty much they brought the court and it went all the way to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court said you are doing exactly you're retransmitting, plain and simple. So ultimately, Aereo has to re re grow grow up and figure out what they want to do with their lives, or just completely go away. Right now they're filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protections. So they can, you know, possibly reconfigure their outlook, but it doesn't look very promising. So, Jerry, what do you think? Have you used it at all? No, I, it's not in Philadelphia, so I never got a chance to try it. Hmm. I'm kind of disappointed. It kind of looked like a neat idea, but it also looked like they knew that it was not gonna 
it looked that it felt that they knew that it wasn't gonna it was it was a stopgap measure before more T V stations go on the internet. Hmm. So Okay. So hey. have you used yeah. the, the Facebook groups app? Oh, this is the stupidest app known to mankind. Why do we need another Facebook separate app? What do you think, Joel? What do you think? It's stupid. She won't shut up. She's over there. I don't know what she's doing. But anyway, um, here, here's the deal. I mean, I don't think Facebook has done a very, very good job of um, groups. You know, I mean, even initially when they introduced groups and you get added to a group even though you didn't want to be in the group, you yes. just automatically opted in, so you have to actually opt out of it. Um, I never really thought that was a, a great premise, but the new Facebook groups app um, mm -hmm. supposedly allows people to share faster. When you open the app, you're supposed to see all your Facebook groups in one place. It's, it's kind nice. of like... That was nice. That was nice because I was able to say, well, I'm a part of too many groups. So let's get rid of some of these. Yeah, I know, but it's kind of like um, like like trying to emulate Hangout or, or even Circles. Yeah. You know? Or Google, know. or Google Communities, which I think are actually very well implemented. Mm. So. Jewel agrees. Jewel agrees. Awesome. <laughs> Well, let's thank one of our sponsors since we kind of skipped over a lot of our sponsors' ads here. Oh, my goodness. Um, today's show is sponsored by Wistia. Wistia is a video hosting and analytics platform that helps businesses get the most out of online video. We use Wistia here at phillytech.org because it's way more professional than YouTube. And the data that Wistia provides helps us understand exactly how our content is being consumed. So we thank everyone at Wistia. Check them out at wistia.com. Since we skipped over a few of our sponsor ads, I'm going to read one more. Well, uh -huh. why don't I take this one, okay? Yeah. Um, so Flywheel is a managed WordPress hosting platform. Built, they host us. Yeah, built specifically for designers and creative agencies. Flywheel makes it simple to build, launch, and manage client sites with its easy-to-use dashboard built from the ground up for the modern web designer with nightly backups, blazing fast load times, WordPress specific security and an awesome support team full of WordPress developers. Flywheel helps thousands of designers across the world launch projects every day. Yay, well, Flywheel! Yeah, she, she does a good job of that. And we'll quickly thank one more and then we'll go on to our last story of the day before our picks. Um, AWeber is an email service provider based in Chalfont, Pennsylvania. We've been in business for 16 years. And then we, I love them, they're great. They've been helping entrepreneurs, agencies, and small businesses connect with their customers through email marketing. If you go to aweber.com slash phillytech, you can try to get your first month for only $1 and give them a whirl. So go to aweber.com slash phillytech and tell them Seth sent you. And of course, <laughs> we're staring at Jerry the whole time because I forgot to switch it to me. No, right. let, let them tell, tell them Seth sent you. Tell them Seth, so. Seth sent you. So apparently Facebook is about to overtake YouTube. Fascinating story. I mean, like, there's so many things that I love about YouTube. Why do you think this is happening? I feel like, because I think people are on Facebook more. I feel like YouTube is a great place to consume video. I feel like Facebook is a good, great place to consume life. You know, people oh. are on Facebook, and they're able to, I thought that sounded really deep, didn't it? That it did. That sounded really good. I like that. Facebook is a place to consume life. Consume life. You should, you should tell that to Facebook. Exactly. They'll probably steal it from me. But <laughs> ultimately, it's, you know, Facebook, you're there for multiple different things, not just video. And I feel like I watch video on Facebook when it's posted by my friends. I'll watch it real fast and see what it's all about. I mean, I'll still go to YouTube during the day to find stuff or to post videos. But um, it generally, Facebook is multifaceted in my opinion. <laughs> oh, dear God. Sorry. Jo that Jewel attacks. <laughs> mm -hmm. Exactly. She just got caught in the wires. So. What do you think, Jerry? What do you think Facebook is? <laughs> um, okay, so what I like about Facebook is that most of the people that I connect with, um, I like to see what's going on in their lives. Um, it's even interesting when people post snarky comments. Uh, <laughs> except for the Dawson group, poor Chuck. What's that? Dual sound group is they're a bunch of trolls. Oh my gosh! Well, you know, okay, that's a whole other. We'll we'll do trolls another time. Yeah, but, so um, <laughs> but what I like about Facebook is that um, the little celebrations, you know, the the birthdays or the two year old babies or the yeah. you know 
the, the dog won another ribbon, you know, those kinds of things. You get to share them. Um, the interesting thing also about Facebook is that it does impact our moods, and it does seem at times that everybody is leading these charmed lives. Um, although recently I saw a post that somebody put up there, and it almost sounded like the guy was going to end his life. So, oh, that's not uh, good. Yeah, um, I reached out, and it turned out that everything was okay. But um, I think that people use it differently. They use it as a way to connect interpersonally, whereas um, YouTube... You know, if you capture a moment and you want to present it on YouTube, um, it's kind of neat. But I don't think it has the same kind of interaction, engagement, and ongoing consistency. Yeah, so I'm showing pictures of my kid at, on, his, on his second birthday. Aww. I made a grand old time. Is that Grandpa? That's Poppy. Poppy. <laughs> Cool. So sharing this with the world, and there he is. He's loving his cupcakes. This is what I love about YouTube. What I love about Google Plus is it makes it makes gifts. I know. I love that. So, so a bunch of photos. So has he seen snow? Did he see snow last year? Or did he remember it? No. You think he'll be excited about the snow tomorrow? Um, probably. Well, now let's move on to our last sponsor, and then let's talk about the snow. snow. <laughs> Okay. Yesterday, and I actually and I recently on the Rants and Ramble show that I, I do every Monday, I ran it about how people say global warming, it's not it's not warming because it's cold. I'm so sick of that. It's you know, Go, global change. freezing. It's climate change. It's climate change. It's all as to it. It's climate change, good or bad, whatever. So anyhow, let's thank our newest sponsor, Zoho Mail. Zoho is actually a multifaceted company. Um, they have Docs, they have a CRM function, but their mail service is a nice competitor to Google Apps. It's a lot more affordable, and they've been around for a while. They've actually been around since before Google Apps came online. So check them out at zoho.com slash mail. Finally, oh. let's go on to our apps. Our picks. Our picks. Our picks. Our apps are picks. Whatever. We, should have, we should have actual, like, a little music intro, like, picks of the week, you know, or something, yeah. <laughs> Apps, picks, woo. Anyhow, <laughs> so I want to share, because of the snow, I have two things. My bonus will be about the snow. First one is a history of email changes. Over at Aweber, our sponsor, they have an email history of all the changes that are constantly updating on changes that are happening in email. It's pretty interesting. Go to emailhistory.aweber.com and check it out. It's updating daily. It's pretty neat. Now also Radar Scope is a iOS and Android app and it's literally like having your own Doppler radar on your phone or your tablet. Perfect for a snowstorm. I love that. I'm going to put that on right now. Yeah, there's a free app and then there's a night of the $10 app. It's expensive but the, the amount of functionality you get with it is well worth it. I've used it during hurric hurricanes and you name it, I, I'm sitting in the basement, huddled in the basement with my family in a hurricane, and, you know, I can check but, out where it is. But, you know, I used um, the Weather Channel. Yeah. And um, I also have a scope as part of it, and also the local news does. So, how, because it sounds like it's de-featured and you're buying it. Um, radar scope is not the weather. It's real-time Radar maps, so it's really neat looking. Works really well. So, Jody, what is Genius Scan? Okay, so you know when you have um, a document, somebody says print the document, sign it, and send it back to us, and there's always the thing you have to sign it, and then you have to find some way to scan it. Well, Genius Scan makes all that easy because all you have to do is take a picture with your phone and then it turns it into a PDF. You can tag the PDF and you can sort it, save it, um, and email it right from the application. It's just, it's very simple. Um, and you can also, like, once you take the picture, you can kind of move the corners around to make sure it's perfect and straighten it out a little bit if it's warped. So um, it, it's, um, it's nice. I've used it quite a bit. <coughs> And uh, it's free. And it's in the, they, they, they have in app purchases as well, and that's in Android and iOS. So check it out. 
And everybody, cool. thanks again for t- tuning into another edition of the Social Media Addicts podcast. I'm Seth. That's Jody, and we'll see you next week. Take Stay care, tuned. Guys.